Hello starlets, I'm Sarah from Everyday Starlet. Welcome to my vlog. This is actually week 11 of the Oxygen Challenge and it is Thursday. <laughs> I had to think about that one a little bit too long. I kind of just want to sit down and have a little casual chat with you. I fully intended to take my after photos at the end of next week, but technically because a few people started the challenge, like I started on time, a few people started a little bit later. So we have until the 15th of September to get our after photos in. So I'm going to see how like next week goes, but I am thinking about not submitting my final photos, like giving myself like another week and a half to try to shed a little bit of body fat. I'm gonna kind of give a full recap of the whole challenge when I'm actually completed with the challenge because I have some opinions about it, who it might be good for and things like that, but I wanna wait until the challenge is completed before I get into all that. I've definitely seen progress but I'm not quite where I was hoping I would be at this stage in the challenge. So, I mean, I'm hoping maybe to give myself a little bit more time to burn some fat before I get back into muscle building. So I'm going to play it a little bit by ear and see how that goes. I ordered some <laughs> bikinis for the after shoot, which I, I've never worn a bikini in my life. So... It's interesting, let's just say. I have a pile of them behind me and I'm definitely returning some of them, but you know. We'll get there one step at a time. We'll see how it goes. But anyway, I'm doing low carb right now and I know there's actually been a lot of people, I feel like, in the Facebook group for the challenge, but there's also a lot of people that I'm hearing about just regularly that have a lot of trouble on low carb. I have tried low carb in the past and been very unsuccessful. And I've also tried it more recently and had a much easier time with it. And so I thought it might be helpful to you for me to sit down and share with you some of the things that I've done and ways that... I've made a lower carb diet work for me. Here are my tips. First and foremost, I wanna say we need to acknowledge that going low carb is not good for everyone. It does not work for everyone. It is not the ideal plan for everyone. There's a reason why there's so many diets out there. It's because there is no perfect formula that will work for everybody. It's what works for you. I actually did a test that I heard about from Jamie, our trainer for the Oxygen Challenge. It's like a cracker test that you use to find out how well your body processes carbs. I did that in a vlog and I will link that vlog to this one in the cards so you guys can actually see the test, do the test. I won't get into all the details because I've already done it, but I'll link that. So if you guys want to check and see if your body processes carbs well or if it doesn't check that out spoiler alert mine doesn't i knew that going into it my body just i love carbs i love my carbs potatoes potatoes is love it, it potatoes i cannot express to you how much i love a potato in reality my body can't handle too many of them it's cruel it's just so cruel i have tried in the past to cut out carbohydrates and been unsuccessful and it's actually led me to a lifetime of binge eating which i i have another i have a video talking about my binge eating experiences and stuff like that which i will link to this one i feel like i have much more of a grip on low carb now than i ever have before first we need to acknowledge whether or not low carb works for you it may not work for you and if it doesn't don't force it i do know that it works for me but it took me a while to get to a place where i was able to do it and let it work for me so the first thing that i did which i believe has helped me Pardon the AC, it's hot in here. The first thing I did that helped low carb work for me is about a year and a half ago, I tried Whole30. And I actually did document my experience with Whole30 and I have a recap video on that. If you're not familiar with Whole30, basically for 30 days you give up a whole list of foods. I kind of liken it to doing a detox. You're still eating food, like it's not like a liquid detox, but you're basically taking a bunch of foods away. And one of the big ones that you have to take away is sugar. What that did, because I'm not really a sweet person. I'm I'm salty. I'm a salty girl, let me tell you. Uh, I love my salt, and I never thought of myself as being someone who has a sweet tooth. I don't tend to crave desserts. However, doing the Whole30 diet really did open my eyes to how much hidden sugars there are in a regular diet, even someone like me, who I was generally eating whole foods and was sort of eliminating a lot of processed foods and, you know, I was getting my sugars from fruit. But I realized doing Whole30, and I have kind of a video about that too, about my some of my realizations about those things, I was eating a lot of fruit to get through Whole30, which 
you know, yes, fruit is good for you. Yes, fruit has a lot of health benefits, but if you eat too much, your body still sees that as sugar. Doing the Whole30 diet really did open my eyes to how much sugar I was eating. So do I think that that's right for everybody? No, my body definitely did go through that. I don't, I don't know, you call it like the, the low carb flu or I don't know how you explain it, but like I definitely had some issues with energy drops, with being foggy, you know, I mean, doing something that drastic was definitely a, a big thing and may not work for everybody. It got me on the path to, as much as I thought that I was already eating very healthy and, you know, there was a lot of like hidden sugars and hidden foods and things that I, I was just eating out of habit. And that was another thing that I that really opened my eyes to that was foods that I was eating that I didn't really even enjoy. I was just eating them out of habit because they were there because other people were eating them. It really helped me prioritize like what is important to me and what foods, what indulgences are really important to me and what do I miss in that process. I don't think that's essential for you to do. I'm not saying like in order to do low carb, you have to do Whole30, but I definitely think that doing that helped me. The next thing that I did, not right away, I had a lot of things that went on in my life around that time, but one of the next things that I did do was I actually sat down and took a look at how much sugar I was getting in my diet. I did kind of incorporate some sugars back in after Whole30, but I really looked at like added sugars, things with hidden sugars, and I you know, even though I kind of went back to eating them after Whole30, I kind of, I, I looked at them a lot differently and I started to slowly wean them out. And that takes time, and especially if you're someone who has a sweet tooth, that can be very, very difficult. I noticed too that a few times when I actually was in a situation where I ate something that was very sugar heavy, I felt awful. And I think that, that that helped me because I kind of, I try to have a rule where I'm like, if I know something is gonna make me feel like crap, I don't need it because I just, it's not worth it to me. That was a process and slowly weaning myself off sugar. For one thing, because sugar has a lot of carbohydrates, but it's not giving a lot of health benefits. And I feel like the key, I think, to surviving on low carb is that you need to make your carbohydrates count. You need to make sure that those carbohydrates are in there when you need them. The ones that are gonna give you fiber that you need because fiber is essential for keeping you full and you need to choose ones that are gonna give you that fiber that you need to keep you satisfied, to keep your body functioning properly, and also the ones that are gonna be in there to give you sustainable energy. It's important when you're on low carb that when you do eat carbs, they need to count. So taking the time to wean out those extra like sugars that are just not helping you at all, that are just giving you like quick bursts of energy. I think we all know, you know, a lot of that sugar that, and there's scientific terms for all this stuff and I'm not a scientist, so I can't, I'm not gonna throw out fancy terms for this, but like simple carbohydrates basically. You know, any kind of like sweeteners or things like that. I actually, I find a lot of foods now, desserts and things, too sweet because and it's taken time but I have definitely I don't know I, my palate is more sensitive so when I do get sugar it, there's more of an impact like it takes less sugar for me to to think that something tastes sweet because I'm not constantly adding sugar to things for example I drink tea throughout the day and I used to just drench it with honey it'd be like a mug of honey with a little bit of tea in it and I actually made the effort to find teas that I actually enjoy without adding sweeteners to them that don't have sweeteners in them because you do have to keep an eye out for some of those. Some of those herbal teas out there, they have hidden ingredients that you might not like. So you got to be careful with those. So I've actually like made the effort to be to to find things that taste good without adding extra sweeteners. I did read a book, which I do recommend. I don't necessarily follow everything in it, but Why French Women Don't Get Fat. And one of the things they mentioned in that book is that, you know, when people from France come to America, they find the foods just so overly sweet. Because, you know, we think of France and we think of like pastries and things like that, but they don't add as much sugar to their foods as we do. And I think, some of it, according to the book, the theory is, is that they use much more quality ingredients. They, you know, they're more 
uh, comfortable spending their money on food than we are. You know, we're kind of in America, we're all about the bargain. You know, how can we get the most stuff for the least amount of money? And we don't necessarily worry about the quality, which is one of the reasons in, in France, you know, adding sugar to your coffee would be absurd because they're all about quality coffee. Whereas in America, we're very like, all right, what's cheap coffee that we can get quick and let's just dump a bunch of stuff in it. I'm not a coffee drinker, so I can't really I'm not going to criticize anybody's coffee choices because I don't, I don't drink coffee, but it's just something to think about. Like, you know, try to find foods that you might not need to add as much sweetener or, you know, things like that too, because they taste naturally good on their own. And I spent quite a bit of time doing that. And I really feel like that prepped me for being able to handle low carb better. Another thing that I did to help me with low carb is to actually sit down and really look at macros. Look at, you know, what is in foods. And I know a lot of people use MyFitnessPal. I've tried to. I just, I mean, I'm old school, so an app on my phone is rarely ever my first choice. If it works well for you and I totally get the convenience of it, go for it. I actually have a spreadsheet and I will just Google like the nutritional information of everything and I will plug it all in my spreadsheet and I will move it around and I'm, I'm kind of old school like that. But really take a look at like what foods that you normally eat in everyday life, like what they actually are. How many carbohydrates are there? What is their fiber content? How much sugar is in them? How about fat content, protein? Really start to lay that stuff out and that will help you learn what the foods are that you're naturally drawn to and what they are nutritionally so that you can actually work on factoring the things that you actually enjoy eating because if any diet no matter what it is whether it be low carb or high carb or anything if you don't enjoy the foods and you're miserable you're not going to sustain it i mean that's true for any diet so you really want to break it down and i mean if if there are foods on there you know, on your list of things that you love that are just really high in carb. You might want to factor in, you know, the best way to portion them. If you really, really love pasta, how can you find a way to balance out pasta and maybe eat less of it because you've added other protein sources or things like that that will fill you up. So, I mean, I definitely think that figuring out what foods you're drawn to and what foods are really important to you so that you can work them into whatever diet you're choosing, that will help you in low carb. It will help you on any diet, really. Now, how low carb you want to go, I think, is really personal preference. The way that we're doing it in this part of the challenge, this last part of the challenge, is we're taking our goal body weight and multiplying it by 0.75, and that is giving us our target carbohydrates. I've been doing that the past couple weeks, and I'm actually actually going to dip it a little bit lower in the next week or so because my body is telling me that it can and I'm I'm not seeing the results and I want to boost it a little bit. You know, how low you want to go, I've never my knowledge. <laughs> I don't think I've ever gone down to like what they call a keto diet or ketosis. I haven't done that. I I don't I don't know how I don't know how I would be on something like that, but I think you need to to really listen to your body. And I also don't think like, don't just wake up one day and say, if you're eating like 200 carbs a day and you all of a sudden wake up one day and I'm like, I'm gonna go to 50 carbs a day, uh, 50 grams or something, like it, you're gonna fail. I mean, you can't do that. Like you really have to start slowly. Start with a meal, like say start with lunch and say, okay, I, you know, my goal is so many carbs per day, okay? And you count out how many meals you eat per day, whether it be three meals or, or four meals or five meals, how many meals you eat. Kind of try to divide that evenly and then work on one meal. Say, okay, that's gonna be my target for lunch. And, you know, I'm gonna try to get to that at lunch. So, you know, you're lowering your carbs at lunchtime and then maybe say, all right, I'm gonna work on dinner and I'm gonna see how I can kind of maybe lower my carbs a little bit at dinner. Like maybe go meal per meal if that helps you. You know, that way you're naturally lowering your carbs, but you're not all of a sudden waking up and being like, yep, I'm going whole hog and, you know, dropping carbs cold turkey and I'm just, you know, because you're setting yourself up for failure. Your body is gonna react to that. It's gonna be under a lot of stress and it's, it's gonna, <laughs> it's not gonna like you basically. Is what I'm saying. So definitely slow and steady wins the race. You may not get that like initial, you know, huge weight loss, but honestly, like the slower you lose weight and the more gradually you do it, the more likely it is that you're gonna keep it off.
Now when you're doing low carb, you do still need to keep track of your total calories. You don't want to go over the total calories that you should be eating for the day, which totally depends on your weight or your goal weight and you know your activity level. There's all kinds of different, I'm, I'm not really qualified to tell you how many calories you should be eating a day, but you want to keep an eye on that. You don't want to go over that, but you do have to realize that as you are lowering your carbs, your fat and your protein are going to need to increase not increase so much that they're over your total calorie intake, but you're gonna need that in order to keep you full. Carbs keep you full, they help you feel sustained, but protein will help you feel full uh, as well, so will healthy fats. Another thing, which I think I mentioned a little bit earlier, which is very important, is to make your carbs count. And I know I mentioned that a little bit earlier, but it's really, really important. You know, if you say, I'm, my goal is, you know, 75 grams of carbs. I'm just throwing it out there. That's not what I'm doing. But uh, you know, say your goal is like 75 grams of carbs a day. And you know, you can't, I mean, you can, but it's not smart for you to eat a meal that is consists of like a whole pizza that has 75 grams of carbs in it. And then you're like, I'm just going to go carb free the rest of the day. That's not practical. Two things when it comes to that example one make your carbs count they should be healthy carbs you want to make sure that those carbs that you're taking in are high in fiber because that is going to i mean fiber is so important for just body function and keeping you full and it also means that the energy that you're getting from carbs is going to last longer say you eat a a high carbohydrate food that has very little fiber in it, you're more likely to get that like quick spike of energy and then you're gonna crash. Whereas like if you eat a carbohydrate that is very high in fiber, your that energy level is gonna sustain you. I also recommend, and this is different for everybody, there are people out there who do really well when they load up on carbohydrates in the morning and then they, you know, don't eat any carbohydrates at dinner time. And there are people that work really well on that because, you know, they get that like energy from carbohydrates in the morning that sustains them throughout the day. And then at dinner, they want to wind down and they don't need carbohydrates so that they do that. And if that works for you, more power to you. That does not work for me. I've only been able to sustain a low carb diet when I evenly distribute my carbohydrates throughout the day. Now, on this particular oxygen plan, I am eating a little bit more carbohydrates in the morning because that's when I work out. And it's important to get carbohydrates to energize your workouts and to sort of refuel yourself after your workouts. So my carbohydrates in the evening have gone down a little bit, but I do still include them because for me, I, and I've, I've actually, there have been other people that have told me they feel this way and I've mentioned it on my channel before. I can't get to sleep if I don't have some kind of carbohydrate in my system. And you know, maybe, maybe that's a defect in me or you know, maybe it's not healthy and it's something I should be fighting through, but I'm not a great sleeper anyway. So for me, it's just important to do whatever I can do to make sure that I can get a good night's sleep. So I find that distributing them throughout the day is important. And I also think that pay attention to when you need the most energy and when you feel like you get an energy crash. I tend to get an energy crash around now. What time is it now? Yeah, it's like two o'clock in the afternoon. Two, three, depending on like what I've been doing for the day. I tend to get an energy crash in the afternoon, basically. I usually need to power through and do more stuff later on in the day. So I actually make myself a smoothie and I put a little bit of fruit in it. I factor that into my total carbohydrates for the day. And one little thing I will tell you, I mean, you don't want to overdo the fruit because there is a lot of sugar in it. But one thing I will tell you, big trick that I discovered, which blew my mind when I was actually like breaking down foods and stuff. If you're looking for like, say like a, a fruit or especially like a frozen fruit to put in your smoothies and stuff, obviously you want to get ones that are like fresh frozen. They're not like covered in syrup or anything like that, but raspberries a lot of fiber bang for your buck in raspberries let me tell you like compared to like blueberries and strawberries i think strawberries are a little bit lower in carb but raspberries the fiber on that is like and blackberries too i think but i don't like blackberries as much as i like raspberries so you know adding raspberries to a smoothie boost that fiber right up there and you're gonna get a lot of bang for your buck when it comes to those carbohydrates so i'm just throwing it out there 
something to think about. And you can even do a mixture, like oh, maybe a little bit of raspberries, a little bit of strawberries, as long as you're measuring it out and you factor that into your total daily carbohydrates, go for it. But for me, I find that that boost, in fact, actually just yesterday, I just grabbed like a protein bar or something that, you know, was about the equivalent, I would say nutritionally, of what I make myself for like a fruit smoothie. And I just grabbed that because yesterday I was busy, I was working, I didn't want to take the time to make the smoothie. And my energy level just did not, it just never boosted back up. I'm telling you, like that, like my fruit smoothie with protein powder and almond milk and stuff like that, I have like videos on how to do that that I've done before. But having that like midday, really really helps boost my energy when i get that crash so that i i can sustain myself a little bit longer so you know it depends on when you get your energy crashes i mean we all get them it just it's normal it happens but i definitely think that it's so important for you to listen to your body and and find that out so yeah th those are some of my tips for how i make low carb work for me uh, are there days when I get cravings? Yes, of course. Are there days when it gets frustrating or I wish I could, you know, just go and eat a whole pizza? Of course. We all get those moments. For me right now, because I'm so, I have a goal and I'm so dedicated to the challenge, I'm more focused, so I'm, it's distracting me from some of the cravings that are going on. But I do think that like once the challenge is over, I'm gonna be a little bit easier on myself. I, I do, I guess I should make a note about like carb refeeds and carb cycling and stuff. I've never actually done that, at least not consciously done that. I've been doing some research about them. I've also been doing some research about reverse dieting, uh, which is something I'm thinking about doing when this challenge is over. So if you know anything about reverse dieting or have any uh, experience with that, let me know, I wanna hear about that. And if you have experience with like carb refeeds or carb cycling, totally let me know about that too. I don't do that personally and I haven't done that. So I, I can't really give any personal experience. I have done a little bit of research on that. I feel like there's a lot of conflicting information online as to whether or not you need a carb refeed. I do know that our trainer in the Oxygen Challenge is very pro carb refeeds, especially if you're going really low carb because it helps boost your metabolism. I've done other research online where people say that you don't need them. I do know I have heard some people that try to do a carb refeed and it actually triggers them into binge eating, which is one of the reasons why I've been a little hesitant to do them, and I've kind of been feeling okay not doing them. But if it's something you wanna know more about, I'd be more than happy to do some research and you know, try to maybe do a video about that, maybe try it after the challenge, or try to find some resources with some information on that for you. So if you wanna see that, let me know. I really hope that you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Believe me, I know that dieting and weight loss and anything can be a challenge no matter how you do it. And I really hope that if you have been thinking about doing low carb, that this video was helpful to you and maybe this might make things easier for you. Uh, I'm certainly not, uh, you know, the, the here all end all. I'm only speaking from my own experience. You know, I everybody is different, but I I have to say I, I I truly believe that if you if you do things slowly, do things gradually, and you listen to your body, that you know you can make almost anything work for you as long as you know you treat your body <laughs> with respect, not to get all spiritual on you. But yeah, so I, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. If you have any questions or you know anything you know you want to share your own experience or you know you have anything that you would like to see in the challenge i'm thinking about still keeping mondays being like a monday motivation like fitness focused you know videos even after the challenge is over i actually am going to be doing a complete cool sculpting review uh and sharing my experience with that i'm getting some new fitness clothes so hopefully that well, I'll be showing you some of that stuff. So yeah, so if you guys have any like fitness related videos or anything that you want to see here on Mondays, let me know. Leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. I love your suggestions. A while back, I was suffering from anxiety and depression, and I truly believe that beauty and makeup and health and fitness and fashion and style saved my life. And I believe it can save yours too. So if you want to join my Starlet Squad, be sure you hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on all my social media channels. Links will all be in the description box below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you join me next time.